Welcome to Bench Africa's virtual reality experience. We're going to take you around Africa to show you what it's really like in one of the most amazing places in the world. Let's start off in East Africa. Welcome to the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania. This park is home to countless animal species and really looks like the Africa you imagine. This park is almost 15,000 square kilometers, the size of Belgium, so they get a lot of... Oh, it is? Yeah. <laughs> it's a small country at this national park. I, I knew it was big, but I Let's take the balloon it. down a little bit lower. Can you hear that honking noise? That's the wildebeest moving around on their annual migration. At any given stage on that migration, you might have over 2 million animals moving together. Those wildebeest spend nine months of the year in the Serengeti before moving up into Kenya and crossing the rivers. Yeah, you can go right to the end of Sopa. Just over there is a four-wheel drive vehicle. Let's jump into that and get a different perspective. Now this isn't the whole herd of the migration. This is only a small herd, maybe about 20,000 animals or so. The vehicle you're in, though, is one of these four-wheel drive vehicles you see commonly all over East Africa. They're the best ones to handle the rough roads. But if you want wild animals, sometimes you need to drive on wild roads. We're going to head next door to a national park called Ngorogoro Crater. And there we go, a small pride of lions doing what cats do best, sleeping. As you can see, even though there's these vehicles around, they're completely relaxed. So, provided you don't get out of the car and go for a walk, you're completely safe. It's a new day, a new sunrise, and a new country. Welcome to Kenya. This camp here is called Satawa Larai. And this area it's in is called Amboseli, which is famous for a few things. Elephants, the Maasai people, and Mount Kilimanjaro. You can see Kilimanjaro waving from across the border. Kilimanjaro is Africa's tallest mountain, coming at it close to 6,000 metres. Now to put that in perspective, that's taller than the base camp of Mount Everest. Now further down towards the eastern shoreline of Africa and Mombasa, you've got Savo East National Park which is where you find yourself now, at Satao Camp. What we're doing is looking out of the watering hole from a viewing platform, or a hide, to watch the animals coming in. Now being the only water source for miles, this watering hole plays home to over 1,200 elephants a day. It's a nice place to relax and watch the world go past. Speaking of relaxing, Africa is famous for its beaches. From the shoreline of Mozambique to the famed island of Zanzibar, which is about 200 kilometers down the coast. White sand, clear water, great snorkeling and scuba diving and all sorts of water spots. It's a perfect place to relax and wash off the safari dust. Now as you can see, East Africa has a lot to offer. There's one more thing East Africa has that I want to show you. Welcome to Rwanda. Apart from being a stunning country, this incredible volcanic chain of mountains here are home to some of the world's most incredible animals, the mountain gorilla. We're going to follow this volcanic chain across the border into Uganda and see if we can see some. There we are. At the base of the tree there is the silverback gorilla. He's the head of the family. And at about six foot tall and about 200 kilograms, this is as close as we're going to get to him. So if you want to see the gorillas, all you do is trek into these mountains and spend a morning hanging out with these incredible animals. There's quite a few of the younger gorillas here. There's one in the tree making all of that noise and a few more down in front of us.
This is Sanctuary Mountain Lodge inside the Bundi Impenetrable Forest in Uganda. The gorillas actually sometimes come up these pathways and spend some time in the lodge. So that's East Africa. As you can see, it's large, open and wild. Let's head down to Southern Africa to see how it compares. Just a quick warning, we're going to start off at Victoria Falls and it may get a little bit loud. Welcome to Victoria Falls, the largest waterfall in the world. The waterfall actually goes for over one and a half kilometers, or the loop is wet as this. the border to the Zimbabwean side of the waterfall and you're standing at the Victoria Falls Hotel, one of the most famous in the world. In front of you is the famous bridge between Zambia and Zimbabwe and that smoke you can see is actually the mist from the falls itself. This waterfall is locally known as Musio Atunya, which means the smoke that thunders. Now that you've heard the thunder of the waterfall and you've seen the smoke, you can see how apt the name actually is. This hotel is a famed example of African colonialism. It's a very popular stop for guests. Now, apart from yourself, there are some other visitors at the hotel today. So let's go and say hello. The little animals making those noises, the ones you can see running around, are mongoose, or a banded mongoose to be exact. They're actually looking through the lawns for something to eat. It's not uncommon for camps and lodges in Africa to have the local wildlife spending time in there. The other guest you see coming towards you is a warthog, or a pumba, as they're now known thanks to the Lion King. Don't worry, this warthog is friendly. So we've followed that Zambezi River back upstream. We find ourselves in Chobe National Park in Botswana. Now one of the most popular ways to explore the area is by houseboat. This national park is also famous for elephants, some of which you can see getting a drink from the river. If you choose to do it by houseboat or by staying at a lodge, you'll be sure to see plenty of amazing animals. This whole area would be quite dry if it wasn't for the Chobe River bringing water in for the animals to drink. Now if you head further south in Botswana and away from the water, you'll find yourself in the Kalahari Desert, home to these beautiful animals. These guys here are meerkats, distant cousins of the mongoose you saw earlier at Victoria Falls. It's possible to come here and spend a morning with them as they go about their daily routines. Now a lot of the animals in Africa you can see in multiple places. There's only a few that are localised. Gorillas are one of them, meerkats are another, and penguins seen down south in Cape Town. A lot of the other animals, giraffes, lions, elephants, etc. you can see throughout various parts of Africa. It's time to go. Let's head to South Africa. This is Camps Bay, about a 20 minute drive from Cape Town in South Africa. This is how diverse Africa can be. Even the beaches are different, like comparing this one to the beaches we saw earlier. From here, you can head one direction to Cape Town or the other direction to do the famous garden route. You must choose to spend a few hours relaxing on the beach before heading into Cape Town for a meal and some shopping. The shopping is great here in Cape Town, whether it's in the city itself, the boutique areas, or here at the V&A waterfront. There's great food, 
great wine, great shopping, great excursions, and lots of things to do. Right near the Ferris wheel, you can see Table Mountain just peeking out and keeping an eye out over the city. Now to see the difference between a safari in Southern Africa and East Africa, let's take you up on the air in the Kruger area to compare. That camp there is Garonga Safari Camp. And apart from their beautiful rooms, you can also try something different and stay in a tree house. You can see how thick the bush is here. Compare that to the balloon in the Serengeti and how open it was. This is one of the major differences in region to region. Every part of Africa has a, a different ecosystem that provides a different experience when you visit, even if they have similar animals. Now this won't be your room for your entire stay, but if you want a night under the stars, give this a go. You can also stay in a more traditional tented lodge or modern lodges, like this one, called Sabi Sabi Earth Lodge. That headboard there above the bed is actually driftwood that washed up after a storm. There really is accommodation for everybody in Africa, according to your tastes and your budget. Now that's just the bedroom, and the main lodge looks like this. People forget that when they're on safari, that their food and their game drives and the accommodation is all provided by the lodge. So rather than just being a hotel, like it would be in Europe, it's a full package. And of course the food and so on is amazing. You'll find in Africa some of the loveliest people you'll ever meet, including the guides, like Beakis at Makutsi Safari Springs. One of the things they teach us um, is to constantly look for body language. And the elephants would tell you that if they want this space where you are, and I have not picked up anything yet. They are feeling, they are in feeding mode. There is no aggression. So even at this distance, it's fine. By the way, do you guys hear the jackal in the background? Wow, 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 wow. Jackal, side-striped jackal. The moment they tell you they're not happy with your presence, you just move away. Give them that space. It's much better that way. Positive reinforcement, you know. As you can see here on Safari, the vehicle's different as well. It's an open top compared to a closed top. Thank you for taking part in Bench Africa's virtual reality experience. That's just a small part of what Africa has to offer. If you have any further questions, just talk to anybody from Bench Africa and they'll be happy to help.